Shangula explained that the wards were originally designed to accommodate a certain number of babies and toddlers without larger mothers, hence a decision was taken not to send mothers home. He said this allowed them to remain close to their admitted babies to breastfeed them, which is vital for their growth and health. Let me address the issue of alleged shortage of beds. Again here, I wish to emphasize that the context matter. Overall, the health facilities have the health facilities have beds for use by patients. The challenge being experienced at the ward in question at Katatora Intermediate Hospital relates to the high number of larger mothers who accompany admitted babies and toddlers in the hospital. Separating babies and the mothers at such a critical juncture would not be in the best interest of the recovery and bonding between mothers and their babies. It is not in the best interest of the long-term health of the babies. <coughs> However, this arrangement is presenting an undesirable phenomenon in terms of security of hospital properties and damage to amenities that were designed for children. It is a matter that is receiving immediate attention. And it's also for the same reason, for example, that a new district hospital is being built in Bindu in order to decongest the existing health facilities. With regard to hygiene and food shortage concerns raised, Shangula said the ministry is committed to enhancing its current systems and approaches as far as hospital sanitation goes, adding that the ministry employs in-house cleaning staff who are deployed to maintain high levels of sanitation standards across all hospital areas. Now let me also address the issue of the alleged food, food shortage. The quantity of food provided to the patients is determined according to the dietary needs of a patient. This is done taking into account the daily recommended calorie intake of the patient. While the majority of patients consume ordinary diet, there are some who are on special diet, including patients suffering from diabetes mellitus and other ailments, or those who require liquid diet. Generally, patients are provided with three meals per day, comprising breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Some patients may require to be provided with meals at fewer intervals, depending on their treatment plan. The meals for patients are provided by catering companies contracted through the public tender system. The ministry has compiled the specifications that service providers need to comply with at all times with respect to the quality and quantity of meal provided to the patients. The ministry does not tolerate any form of non-compliance and any company or service provider that does not abide by or comply with the stated specification will face sanction. The ministry will not hesitate to recommend to the Central Procurement Board the debarment of any defaulting company from taking place in procurement activities related to the provision of catering services to public entities. According to Shangula, a costed plan of 16 billion Namibian dollars was approved by Cabinet for the mobilization of additional resources to strengthen the public health system.